In lecture 9 and the first part of lecture 10, we have studied velocity and acceleration analysis of planar mechanisms using complex number representation of vectors. In this module, we will perform velocity and acceleration analysis of planar mechanisms with Cartesian representation of vectors in the real plane, which means that given a vector v, we will write it as xi plus yj, where i and j are the unit vectors along the x-axis and y-axis respectively. The discussion in this module will build on your knowledge of dynamics from MEC 262 or an equivalent first course in engineering dynamics. The purpose here is to show that the knowledge that you built in engineering dynamics can also be used to come to the same set of equations for velocity and acceleration analysis that we derived in the earlier lectures. To start with, let us look at the following problem. Consider a link AP whose motion is constrained by this pivot at A and the pivot is moving at a velocity VA. The angular velocity of the link is omega and omega is positive in the counterclockwise direction and negative in the clockwise direction. So the question is, what is the velocity of point P, which is denoted by VP? From your dynamics class, you know that VP is VA plus omega cross RPA, where RPA is the position vector of P with respect to A. Since this formula is very fundamental, let us just see how we can obtain this formula. Some of you may have seen this before but it is good to refresh your memory. So we start with the position of the point P. The position vector of the point P, which is given by RP, is equal to RA, which is the position vector of the point A, plus RPA, which is the position vector of point P with respect to A. If I take the time derivative of this equation, I get d dt of rp is d dt of ra plus d dt of rpa. d dt of rp by definition is the velocity of point p. d dt of ra is by definition the velocity of the point a. So the question is what is d dt of rpa? As we will show shortly, d dt of rpa is in fact omega cross rpa. So d dt of rpa can be written as d dt of r cos theta times i plus d dt of r sin theta times j, where i and j are the unit vectors along the x-axis and the y-axis. Small r is the magnitude of the vector rpa and theta is the angle that the vector makes with the x-axis. Now in this expression, only theta changes with time. r, i and j are constants. So d dt of r cos theta will become minus r sin theta times theta dot. And d dt of r sin theta will become r cos theta times theta dot. You can see this by using chain rule. So d dt of r cos theta times i equal to r times i d d theta of cos theta times d theta dt. We call d theta dt as theta dot and dd theta of cos theta is minus sin theta. So we have minus ri hat sin theta theta dot. So that's what we have here. Similarly, by using the chain rule, we can get the derivative here, which gives rise to this term. Now minus i hat can be written as k hat times j hat, where k hat is the unit vector coming out of this plane and j hat can be written as k hat cross i hat. I can rearrange this line and write it as theta dot k hat cross r cos theta i hat plus sine theta j hat. To see that these two lines are equivalent, just do out this multiplication and you will see that you get this line. Now this term here is the position vector of p with respect to a and theta dot times k hat is my angular velocity vector omega. Therefore, we get t dt of rpa is omega cross rpa. There are a couple of points to note here. 
The first is about notation. Whenever I use the bold font omega, what I mean is the angular velocity vector omega. For the planar motion case, this angular velocity vector points outward from the screen when the rotation is counterclockwise and it points inwards to the screen when the rotation is clockwise. When I use omega without the bold font, I mean the signed angular velocity where the sign denotes whether we are rotating in the counterclockwise or the clockwise direction. Positive would indicate counterclockwise rotation and negative would indicate at clockwise rotation. Another point to note here is in this vector method, frequently we have to do the cross products of the unit vectors i, j, and k. Now depending on the order of the unit vectors in the cross product, the sign changes. One trick that I find useful in keeping track of these signs are as follows. Write down the unit vectors i, j, and k in the counterclockwise direction along a circle. Then if your cross product is in the counterclockwise direction, the sign is positive. So i cross j gives me k, j cross k will give me i and k cross i will give me j. On the other hand, if the order in the product is in the clockwise direction, the sign will be negative. So here you can see that k cross j is in the clockwise direction, so it gives rise to minus i. k cross i is in the counterclockwise direction, so I get j. Now this velocity of a point on the moving link that we derived is all that we will need to do the velocity analysis of a four bar mechanism. We need to apply this vector equation here to each of the three moving links, which will result in three vector equations. And these three vector equations can then be simplified and reduced to one vector equation by substitutions. And then this one vector equation can be reduced to two scalar equations from which we can solve for the unknowns. And these two scalar equations that you will get will be the same as what we obtained when using complex number representation of vectors. And again, when we are doing this velocity analysis, we'll always assume that all position information is known. So let's see how to apply this general scheme that I wrote here in words to the four bar mechanism. We'll first look at the link O to A. The velocity of point A, which is VA, is the velocity VO2 of the origin O2 plus the velocity of A with respect to O2. Now V of O2 is zero because O2 is fixed. And velocity of A with respect to O2 is omega2 cross R2, where R2 is this vector O2A. Now velocity of the point B, which is denoted by VB, is the velocity of the point A, which is denoted by VA, plus velocity of B with respect to A, which is denoted by VBA. Now VA I have from here as omega 2 cross R2, and VBA will be the angular velocity of link 3 cross this vector R3, which is what I have written here. Now since point B is moving along a circle centered at the pivot O4, VB is VO4 plus VBO4. Now VO4 is 0 and VBO4 or velocity of point B with respect to O4 is omega 4 which is the angular velocity of link 4 cross R4 which is this vector here. Now you will notice here that we have obtained the velocity of the same point B once by going in this direction the other time by going in this direction. And since it is the same point, they have to be equal. So I have omega 2 cross r2 plus omega 3 cross r3 minus omega 4 cross r4 equal to 0, which is this equation here. So this is the loop closure equation at the velocity level. Now what I can do is write down the vector omega 2 as omega 2 times k hat. The vector r2 is a cos theta to i hat plus a sine theta to j hat 
omega 3 is omega 3 k hat r 3 is b cos theta 3 i hat plus b sin theta 3 j hat omega 4 is omega 4 k hat and r 4 is c cos theta 4 i hat plus c sin theta 4 j hat and a b c are the lengths of the links o 2 a a b and b c respectively from here you can do straightforward algebraic simplification and equate the x and y components to zero to get these two equations. The first equation is obtained by equating the x component to zero and the second equation is obtained by equating the y component to zero. To go from here to here, you have to just expand out these cross products and use the trick that I had said before write i, j, k and depending on the order in which the cross products appear, you need to make sure you use the appropriate sign. I will leave it to you as an exercise to get from this equation to this equation. You will note that this system of equation is same that you had obtained before, where the unknowns are omega 3 and omega 4. So this is a system of two linear equations in two unknowns because the link lengths a, b, c are known and the positions theta 2, theta 3 and theta 4 are assumed to be known. Let us now look at the acceleration analysis problem. We'll start with the same scenario that we looked at in the velocity analysis case, where we have a link a, p, which is pivoted at a. There's a global frame x, o, y. The pivot a has an acceleration a, a in the global frame. The angular acceleration of the link AP is denoted by alpha and the angular velocity of the link AP is denoted by omega. Theta is the angle that the link AP makes with the x-axis and RPA is the position vector of point P with respect to point A. The question is, what is the acceleration of point P? In the global frame. The acceleration of point P in the global frame is denoted by AP and as you know AP is AA which is the acceleration of point A plus alpha cross RPA minus omega square RPA. This alpha cross RPA is a tangential acceleration and omega square RPA is a centripetal acceleration which is pointing inwards. To see how we get this expression, we'll start with the velocity equations that we derived before, which is velocity of point P is velocity of point A plus omega cross RPA, which is the position vector of point P with respect to point A. If I take the time derivative of this equation, then I get ddt of VP is equal to ddt of VA plus ddt of omega cross RPA. Now ddt of VP is the acceleration of point P, which is AP. DDT of VA is the acceleration of point A, which is denoted by AA. And we have to find what is DDT of omega cross RPA. And it will turn out to be this term. Now, when I'm doing DDT of omega cross RPA, note that omega and RPA are vectors, and this cross is a vector cross product. Even in this case, the product rule applies so what I will get is DDT of omega cross RPA plus omega cross DDT of RPA. Now DDT of omega or rate of change of the angular velocity is the angular acceleration alpha. So the first term becomes alpha cross RPA and the second term becomes omega cross omega cross RPA because we have shown for velocity analysis that DDT of RPA is omega cross RPA. Now to simplify this term here, we first note that if I have any three vectors a, b and c in R3 or in three-dimensional space, then a cross b cross c is b times a dot c minus c times a dot p. These dots here are vector dot products which gives me scalars. Now in particular, when B is same as A, I can write A cross A cross C. In place of B, I substitute A. So this becomes A, A dot C and this A dot B becomes A dot A. 
Now a dot a is the square of the magnitude of the vector a, which I denote by a square here. So small a denotes the magnitude of the vector a. So what I have is a times a dot c minus a squared c. So using this expression and thinking of a as omega and c as rpa, what we obtain is omega cross omega cross rpa is omega times omega dot rpa minus omega square rpa. Now omega dot rpa is zero. Why is this true? rpa is a vector in this plane. Omega is a vector that is perpendicular to the plane in which the link moves. So omega is always perpendicular to rpa. And the dot product of two vectors that are perpendicular to each other is always zero. So I get this cross product omega cross omega cross rpa as simply minus omega square rpa, which is a centripetal acceleration term. So ddt of omega cross rpa becomes alpha cross rpa minus omega square rpa. So my ap then becomes aa plus alpha cross rpa minus omega square rpa. The acceleration equation that we wrote down for the point P on the rotating link with a moving pivot A is all that we need for acceleration analysis of the four bar linkage. We need to first apply this acceleration vector equation to each of the three moving links, which will result in three vector equations. And then by algebraic simplification and substitution, we can reduce the three vector equations into one vector equation. The vector equation will lead to two scalar equations from which we can solve for the two unknowns. Again, for acceleration analysis, all position and velocity information are assumed to be known. Now, I will show you how to apply this general method that we have written down in words here to the four bar mechanism. Let us first consider the link O2A the acceleration of the point A, which is denoted by AA, is equal to the acceleration of the pivot O2, which is AO2, plus acceleration of A with respect to O2. Now O2 is fixed, so AO2 is 0, and the acceleration of A with respect to O2 is alpha 2 cross R2 minus omega 2 square R2, where alpha 2 is the angular acceleration of the link 2 or the link O2A, omega 2 is the angular velocity of the link O2A and R2 is the vector O2A. This vector is R2. If we consider the link AB, the acceleration of the point B is the acceleration of the point A plus acceleration of B with respect to A. From here, we have acceleration of point A is alpha 2 cross R2 minus omega 2 square R2, which is substituted here. Now the acceleration of B with respect to A is alpha 3 cross R3 minus omega 3 square R3, where alpha 3 cross R3 is the tangential acceleration term and omega 3 square R3 is the centripetal acceleration term. Alpha 3 is the angular acceleration of link 3 or link AB and omega 3 is the angular velocity of AB. R3 is the vector AB. Now since B is moving on the circle with center at O4, I can also write the acceleration of the point B is the acceleration of the point O4 plus the acceleration of, this should be B here, B with respect to O4. Since O4 is fixed, AO4 is 0 and acceleration of B with respect to O4 is alpha 4 cross R4 minus omega 4 square R4 where alpha 4 is the angular acceleration of the link 4 or O4B, omega 4 is the angular velocity of O4B and R4 is the vector O4B. Since both of these expressions here refer to the acceleration of the same point, I can equate them. If I equate these two expressions, I get this equation here. If I substitute for the corresponding angular accelerations and the vectors R2, R3 and R4, then I can simplify this vector equation to get two scalar equations, which would be the same that we had obtained earlier using the complex number representations of vectors. The algebra here is quite tedious and since we will get to the same final set of equations that we can use to solve for the unknowns alpha 3 and alpha 4, 
I will not go through the algebraic steps. You can either use a symbolic algebra software like Mathematica or Maple or work this out by hand to verify that you get to the same set of equations. Let us now go through a numerical example. Consider the disc of radius 200 mm that is rotating and there is a link AB that is attached to the disc at the pivot A and to a slider at the pivot B. So as you may realize, this is a slider crank mechanism. And since the center of the disc and the center of the slider and the pivot B are collinear, this is a slider crank mechanism with no offset. We are given that the disc is rotating with an angular velocity of 3 radian per second in the clockwise direction and an angular acceleration of alpha equal to 8 radian per second square at this instant. What this means is that the instance where the pivot A is vertically above the pivot O2 or this angle is 90 degree. Our goal is to find the acceleration at point B and the angular velocity and angular acceleration of the coupler link AB. The first thing to note is at the instant shown, points A and points B are both moving horizontally. Since the angle A O2 B is 90 degree, the tangential direction here is along the horizontal direction. The disc is moving clockwise, so point A has a velocity in this direction. And point B is fixed to the slider, so it is constrained to move along the horizontal direction. Furthermore, since A and B are points on a rigid body, when they are moving in the same horizontal direction, their velocity has to be the same, or VB has to be equal to VA. Now before we proceed further, let us just put in some notations. So the ground is the link 1, this disc is the link 2, the link AB is the link 3, and the slider is the link 4. So omega 3 here is the angular velocity of the link 3, and the vector R3 is the vector from A to B. So if I consider the link AB, the velocity of the point B is equal to velocity of the point A, plus omega 3 cross r3. Now at this instant shown, as you have seen before, vb is equal to va. This implies that omega 3 cross r3 will be equal to 0. Now the vector omega 3 is along the z axis, which is normal to the plane. And the vector r3 is on the xy plane. And the magnitude of the vector r3 is greater than 0. So the cross product of these two vectors can be equal to 0, if and only if the magnitude of omega 3 is 0. Therefore, the angular velocity of the link AB is 0. Now, the acceleration of point B, which is denoted by AB, is the acceleration of point A, which is denoted by AA, plus the acceleration of B with respect to A. AA is alpha 2 cross R2 minus omega 2 square R2, where alpha 2 is the angular acceleration of this link 2. Omega 2 is the angular velocity of the link 2, and R2 is this vector here. The acceleration of B with respect to A is alpha 3 cross R3 minus omega 3 square R3, where alpha 3 is the angular acceleration of link 3 or the link AB, and R3 is this vector as we have said before. Omega 3 is the angular velocity of link 3. Now we have already found out that omega 3 is 0, so this term will be 0. So acceleration of B with respect to A is simply alpha 3 cross r3 at this instant. From the given problem data, the disk has an acceleration of 8 radian per second in the clockwise direction. So the angular acceleration vector alpha 2 will be minus 8 times k hat. The minus comes in because everything in the clockwise direction is considered negative. The vector r2 equals to 0.2 times j, where 0.2 meters is the radius of the disk. Omega 2 is minus 3 radians per second because again the angular velocity is in the clockwise direction. Substituting alpha, r2 and omega 2 into this equation, we obtain the acceleration of point A. Now we have to determine the angular acceleration of link AB. Let the angular acceleration of link AB be alpha 3 which is alpha 3 times k hat and here you should note that the alpha 3 here has bold font which indicates that it's a vector and this is the scalar coefficient of the angular acceleration vector. The vector R3 
is 0.4 which is the length of AB cos 30 i minus sin 30 j. To see this note that the vector r3 is from a to b so I can draw the vector like this and this angle is 30 degree so this component here is 0.4 sin 30 and there will be a negative sign because it is in the negative direction and this component the x component here is 0.4 cos 30. The acceleration of the point B is along the x direction. So we write AB equal to small AB times I hat. So I can obtain ABA using this formula by substituting for alpha 3 which is alpha 3 k hat and R3 which is this expression here. So I substitute in here and now note that I have to do this cross products and if I do I j k the first term k hat cross i hat will give me j hat because I'm going in the counterclockwise direction and the second cross product k hat cross j hat which is in the clockwise direction will give me minus i hat so minus i hat and this minus gives me this plus here so the acceleration of point b is the acceleration of a which is this term and that comes in here plus the acceleration of b with respect to a which is this term which comes from here i have acceleration of point b is a b times i hat and also it is this whole term here so a b times i hat equal to this term here now what i will do is compare the x and y components on both sides and note that on the left hand side the coefficient of the y component is zero so i will get the equation zero equal to this part here and a b equal to this part here and there are two unknowns here a b and alpha 3 from the second equation i can solve directly for alpha 3 and i get 5.2 radian per second square in the counterclockwise direction and from the first equation here i can then solve for a b which i get 2.64 towards the right.